Okay, welcome back to AP Statistics. Again, still not affiliated with the College Board. This is Dr. Kling, and I'm going to talk about bias and variability. What we're talking about is the use of a statistic. I'll call it a sample statistic. to estimate a <coughs> population parameter. And uh, if you forget what the statistic is and what a parameter is, please go back and look at my lecture on that. Okay, so think of this, uh, a metaphor for this is you have a target. Sorry, I'm not drawing that target too well, but let's say this is a target we're trying to shoot at. And the statistic is like a procedure <coughs> for trying to hit the target. Okay, and if if we all, if the statistic always came out somewhere over here on this side of the target, that would be a sign that it's biased. That is, it seems to always come out on one side rather than in the middle. On the other hand, if it, well, I probably will need a bunch of targets to illustrate all these points, but if, if, if the statistic sort of on average was neither above, below, left, right, then this would be unbiased. <coughs> and there's a, uh, there's a joke about an, an economist or a statistician who goes to shoot a deer. And so let's say the deer is here. And the first time the uh, the economist shoots, he goes it's, he goes here. The second time, so let's say that's 20 feet to the right. The second time, 20 feet to the left. And then you see the economist jumping up and down saying, I got the deer, I got the deer. Because on average, it was unbiased. It was 20 feet to the right once, 20 feet to the left the other time. So it was still unbiased. <coughs> the problem is that the there's a with this was that there was a lot of variability. So variability measures on average how far you are from the target. It's a lot like variance. So if the center of the target is here and your shots are end up way out here, they may be unbiased but this would be highly variable. Variable. And if they were all, on average, pretty close, this would be low variability. So, first of all, some remarks on bias. We usually think of bias in the ordinary thing in the ordinary language as intentional, but in statistics it could it's rarely intentional. And so I'm I'm going to underline unintentional because you often get unintentional bias in statistics. That is you're really you're not you're not trying to pay intentional bias would be let's say you take a poll after a president gives a speech on uh, a program to spend money to create jobs, and you say, you ask people, what would you think of the president's idea for creating jobs, if you want to bias the poll one way, and you say, what would you think of the president's idea to spend a lot of money and raise the deficit, if you want to bias the poll the other way. So that would be intentional bias, but most bias and that you have to worry about is unintentional. You don't realize the effect <coughs> of the way you conduct the study on the outcome on the outcome of the study. And it's really dealing with this unintentional bias is a lot of what applied statistics is about. And we'll talk about it when we um, much later in the course when we do our discussion of experimental design issues, how to remove various forms of bias that occur. Um, so the 
The other thing I'll say about bias then is that it is usually a design issue. And in particular, it cannot be solved with a larger sample. So it doesn't, <coughs> there's nothing you can do to just sort of spend more money in some sense to throw out bias. You cannot, um, you cannot solve bias by simply doing more of the same biased approach. Uh, variability, variability is often boils down to sample size. There are some ta there are some design tactics also that can affect that can affect variability, but mostly it's a sample size issue where typically the larger sample size reduces variability. And in fact, a lot of the <coughs> a lot of the math that we that we'll be doing it from this point, so the mathematics of statistics is often used to measure or predict variability. And I think I'm going to end this with a mention of a famous theorem called the Central Limit Theorem. Which is about the um, what a sample mean sort of looks like as a predictor or estimator of the true mean. And one of the rules, is, one of the implications of the central limit theorem is if you take a random sample, then the sample mean will be unbiased. So it will tend to <coughs> look like the uh, on average, it will give you the true mean, uh, and that the standard deviation will approach the true standard deviation of the square root of n. Now, I'm being very vague here. I'm not great at doing the central limit theorem. Um, I'll show you some people who are. If you go to YouTube and just look for central limit theorem, uh, you find this uh, <coughs> this one particular uh, I thought was pretty good by uh, this mathematics person at the University of South Alabama. You can try the famous uh, Khan of Khan Academy. The point is uh, you can find better, much better lectures than me about it. Uh, I think what I need to learn about the central limit theorem is that you can think of it as being as an exercise of taking lots of samples. So taking many, many samples to get at a mean. So we're all trying to get, to get the same mean using a bunch of samples <coughs> and the so we'll call the sample means x bar. X bar is this, are, are the the sample mean 
from each sample. Then we have, then the central limit theorem says that, sorry, that x bar will be distributed, this is for large enough samples, will be distributed normally, that is, regardless of the underlying distribution. Uh, you could have a binomial distribution, you could have a highly skewed distribution, it doesn't matter. This x bar will be distributed normally with the mean of these sample means equal to the true population mean and the standard deviation of these sample means equal to the standard true standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. And again, I urge you to watch someone else's video who does a better job with that. And we'll go on with something else next time.